Hello and welcome back everyone to our nine month ultimate world cruise adventure. And today we're in Kagoshima, Japan, where we visit a volcano and eat the best steak dinner we've ever had in our lives. Welcome to Living Phase Two. Hi, I'm Mike. And I'm Nancy, and we're empty nesters striving to live life to the fullest. And we're living that full life aboard Royal Caribbean's nine-month ultimate world cruise on Serenade of the Seas. Well, we sure are. Well, friends, today we are in Kagoshima, Japan. Our boat actually, our ship actually docks late in the morning, so I had an opportunity to get a little laundry done ahead of time. Mm -hmm. I will do a load of laundry, oh, maybe once every week and a half to two weeks just to wash delicates, things Mm -hmm. like that anything i'm afraid they might shrink mm -hmm. <laughs> otherwise i let royal do most of our laundry while we're on the trip mm -hmm. uh, but today, this is the glamorous and exciting <laughs> part of being a world cruiser world they, traveler right <laughs> sitting they, in the laundry room. we have a lot they they had uh, converted three rooms on the ship into laundry rooms and have given world cruisers a laundry card uh, so laundry facilities were included for the world mm -hmm. cruisers which is very nice because mm -hmm. We need to do it. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So that's that's the the you know the pedestrian part of being that's a world right. cruiser. So, yeah. Well, the approach to Kagoshima was actually quite beautiful. Mm -hmm. Sailing through the Japanese islands, you can see you know volcanic peaks, and it's just really a beautiful sail in as they come in. But well, we finally arrived about 10, 30, 11 o'clock. We got off the ship, and and we have been so touched and thrilled with the reception that we've gotten in Japan. It's just, it, it's blown us away. It's, it's been it, very sweet. I know at every port we've had people greeting us and waving and cheering and you can you can see people and they're, they're smiling and they're welcoming and, and we've had people come back for sailaways and waving us you know to the ship as it leaves and it, it's it's very, very been very touching. Very, very it, has, yes, it has. I'd... Well, we went and uh, got off the ship and then uh, got in line. There actually was quite a line for taxis here. Uh, the main reason is it was such a late arrival everybody got off the ship at the same time and it and you really do need to take a taxi it's about a 20 to 30 minute walk to kind of the edge of town but where we were trying to get to was a good 30 35 minute drive right. so you know it really wasn't someplace we could walk to we needed to take a taxi right and now we've told you in the past to use the go app for your taxi but here it didn't it didn't really apply or didn't work because mm -hmm. there was a taxi stand just right there at the port and you just needed to get in line for the taxi in fact i think uh one of you tried to one, one of our friends tried to use the go app and nobody was responding well because they were all just driving to the they port were. to pick and the us up anyway. And the taxis just kept, kept coming, just pretty much one right after the other. So mm -hmm. it, the line went relatively quickly. Yeah, so we got on. Well, what I had found, the, the kind of number one thing I wanted to do in Kagoshima, Kagoshima is the home of the traditional start or the founding of Wagyu beef. Mm -hmm. So the, some of the best beef in the entire world. And so that's what we, we had a goal. We were going to have a Wagyu beef dinner here in Kagoshima. And I'd picked a particular restaurant that got good reviews, seemed like it'd be really good. Had the taxi driver take us there. There, but and, and Google said it was open. Yes, Google said it was open <laughs> for lunch, uh, it, but it was not. No. Um, we got there, and you know what? The taxi driver, we actually had to take two taxis because there were there six, were six of us mm -hmm. uh, in this group. There were there were uh, three couples. And the, the, the cab driver stops. He sees it's closed. He's like, oh, my goodness. You know, it's like closed. And and he's trying to be so helpful. And he he's with the... He kind of hated to just leave us I there. I know. <laughs> and, and he got with the other taxi driver. And they're like, oh, this is what they're looking for. Where should we go? And then... People are so friendly. Oh, I, I, I know. People in Japan have been so friendly that there was a, a, a young man who walked beside it walked up um, the street here mm -hmm. and saw us and he could kind of tell that we're you know puzzled and, and not sure what to do and he spoke a little bit of English and so we told him we wanted Wagyu beef and he said just a minute and he he literally runs two blocks ahead and then goes around a corner where he, he said what he said he said wait right here he runs ahead around the corner and then a minute or two later he comes back and he signals us to come on 
And uh, he said, this is this my place, my place. <laughs> <laughs> that, or, and I guess uh-huh. it wasn't his place that he, he owned it's or his, worked at, but yeah. it's the place he liked to patronize right. uh, when he wanted Wagyu beef. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, and so it we, didn't disappoint. It didn't disappoint at all. <laughs> so, at all. Um, it, it wasn't like a traditional Japanese steakhouse, um, but it was the preparation of the beef, the quality of the beef, mm-hmm. everything was just absolutely top notch. It was the restaurant itself was kind of a weird combination of German and, and Japanese, but <laughs> but in the end we had our Wagyu beef and it was cooked to perfection. You literally could take the beef, push on it with your tongue against the roof of your mouth, and it just fell it, apart. It seriously was and I, and I hate saying this because you cook good you cook good <laughs> meat. <laughs> I, I just you, don't you pay a hundred dollars a pound for it at home. <laughs> no, but it, it was seriously some of the best steak I've ever had in my life. It yeah. was, it was. Yeah. And being in Japan and this particular restaurant we went to, we've said this in some of our previous ja- uh, Japanese videos and our other stops, immensely affordable. It was, I think, for two of us to both have a Wagyu steak meal at, and you know, with sides, and it even came, we had a, a, a beer with it and a dessert and a coffee and all the things that go with it. And I think it was $80 for two of us. It was crazy. I was, I mean, you would pay that, you'd pay $80 for a, you know, for a half a pound of Wagyu beef that you have to cook yourself back in the States. So it, it was very, very good, very affordable. And, uh, and 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 they had a show with it with all the fire and the flames, how they cooked it and everything and sizzling. And no, I d- that didn't good. disappoint. Was, so yeah. that was one of the things we wanted to do in Kagoshima and we met our goal. We, we got did. to do that. Well, the next, we actually walked to the, the ferry uh, Mm-hmm. station because we we're going to take a ferry to a, another little island that had a volcano mm-hmm. now the ferries are part of their public transportation system mm-hmm. and the ferry would go every 20 minutes mm-hmm. i think it was only two dollars mm-hmm. a person for right. us to go mm-hmm. and uh, so we took a ferry to the other island to right. see the volcano right and the, the island is the volcano that, yeah that's right <laughs> yeah. And, yes. and this volcano almost continuously erupts this is an active volcano in fact the town has issues that there's volcanic ash that falls all over the town all the time now unfortunately we kept waiting and kept waiting but the weather just never really cleared for us to get a good picture to get a good view of the entire the volcano. The volcano i mean really beautiful views with the clouds and everything but we really never did get that view of the smoking top of the volcano mm-hmm. and and yeah you know it is it is what it is when you world travel that yeah. you can't the weather doesn't always cooperate um luckily it didn't really rain on us or anything i think one time it sprinkled just <laughs> yeah, a little just cloudy yeah but it was just cloudy and a little dreary that day but going to the island we found that there was many things to do on this island Mm -hmm. we just really didn't have time to do them all but we did find a fun one to go do right they have there's a a stream a hot springs stream that kind of goes through a park there and they have set up little seats throughout this stream they've they've the stream is concreted in so that the water just flows down the concrete and people will go and soak their feet and legs in what they feel like is very healing mm-hmm. water mm-hmm. and so that's kind of the thing to do there and that's, and what, we that's what we did we got with our friends and, and we actually felt quite good when we got out we did <laughs> you know we've done a lot of touring a lot of walking and you know taking off your shoes and socks and rolling your pant legs up and just soaking your feet yeah. in the hot springs it was nice and it wasn't super it, it was um hotter than warm but not uh-huh. super hot yeah it wasn't burning hot or mm-hmm. anything yeah and and this stream went all through this park it wasn't just a small little yeah. area it went all through here and a lot of local people from Kagoshima were here soaking their feet and just enjoying mm-hmm. the park and that that was really nice and well after we soaked our feet we had to walk some more so we got up and went for a little stroll through the the island and through the park and saw the bay we got to see uh, Kagoshima itself we even got a view of our cruise ship from mm-hmm. on the other side of the island it from is. the island yeah very pretty there mm-hmm. yeah it was really beautiful and then at that point you know, we looked at some of the activities to do on the island. You can do things like rent bicycles or e-bikes and ride around the island. That would be fun. It would be a lot of fun. Um, there were some other uh, sites to go see around the island. The hard part is just we didn't have the time to go see this because it's already 3 or 4 o'clock. All aboard was 7.30. And so we decided at that point, you know, we've had our nice Wagyu meal. Mm-hmm. We have saw the, the volcano. We went, took the ferry to the volcano. Let's go ahead and head back to the ship. So. We did. Yep. Mm-hmm. So we took the ferry back. Mm-hmm. 
and uh, then made our way back to the ship. Mm-hmm. And back, once we got back to the ship, there were there were food trucks that were there mm-hmm. at the ship. There was even a Wagyu food truck. Now, we'd yep. already had our Wagyu beef, so we didn't yep. try that. But mm-hmm. you did try something. Yep, they had a black pork hot dog. And so for those of you that have seen our <laughs> previous episodes, be sure to go back and especially look at Busan, where we had a black pork roll there. Now, black pork is not, the meat is not black. The skin of the pigs they that they utilize for the pork is black, and it's a heritage, what we'd call in the U.S. a heritage breed, which means it's got very good flavor. Um, you know, it's, it's uh, if you think about it kind of on the organic side, I mean, it's it's just super flavor. But they had a hot dog made from black pork, and they I decided, did. well, continue the hot dog challenge. Exactly. And decided to have a Japanese black pork hot dog. And it was better than yesterday's, the uh, grocery store yeah, hot the dog. The bakery hot dog, yeah. <laughs> it, and it actually was very good. The, the mm. meat itself was good. The bun was good. Uh, yeah, I it's in the top two or three hot dogs, I think. It was really good. Not still as good as the Korean, the Korean corn dog. dog. The yeah. Korean corn dog was really good. <laughs> um, but this was very good, too. Yeah. So, yeah, the hot dog challenge continues. So make sure you get a Kogoshima black pork hot dog on your travels. Yeah. Well, we went on board, and and by then, it's getting later. So you, we're probably thinking all we're talking is about eating. But um, <laughs> we, had our, we had our lunch at about... 11 30 and so now about seven o'clock at night we sat with some friends and we decided you know we're in japan let's have sushi <laughs> so. <laughs> so there's a specialty restaurant on board the ship here at izumi's and uh, we actually were having happy hour up mm-hmm. there at izumi's and mm-hmm. we just decided let's just stay and have dinner and they had room for us because mm-hmm. sometimes you need to make a reservation mm-hmm. when they're busy uh, but they had room for us and yeah. so we got to have sushi for That's dinner right. which was delicious yeah it is they always do a great job there and uh, we enjoyed that a lot so well after Azumi's, we uh, headed back to our cabin hit the rack because we have actually a very busy sea day tomorrow there's a lot yeah. going on the next yeah. day so right. for our sea day here uh, you're doing some preparation because you've got something exciting coming up that's right so I'm actually going to do an enrichment lecture on bourbon. The title of the enrichment lecture is Bourbon, a Distinctive American Drink. Uh, As some of you know, we've talked about in the past, I'm a a certified bourbon steward through the Stave and Thief Society. So it's kind of a hobby. I enjoy doing that. So I did an offer to Royal Caribbean to do an enrichment lecture on board, actually two of them. Mm -hmm. And the first one is coming up here uh, on this sea day now. And so I was preparing for that, getting things ready. And in addition to that, on board, the bar manager and the hotel manager offered to do a um, drink of the day based on bourbon. And so we went down to one of the bars. We sat and tried to come up with a very easy recipe that their bartenders could serve a lot of people. And we decided to do bourbon cream. And it was delicious. Mm -hmm. It was absolutely delicious with Mm -hmm. the bourbon and the the sweetened condensed milk, Mm -hmm. a little bit of chocolate Uh and and, um, Mm -hmm. and whole milk too. So it was quite good. Yeah, it was very good. And in fact, uh, we'll put the recipe for this in uh, in the link in the description. So take a look down there and you can see the recipe for Mike's Bourbon Cream. And that was served on board. And then I did later that afternoon, did the the enrichment lecture. And uh, we will post the full enrichment lecture uh, on our YouTube channel here at some point coming up in the future. So if you ever want to see a t- part one talk, at least on, on bourbon and how it's made and, and all about it, we'll post that as well. That was a lot of fun. Right. A and lot of fun. Now, they'd also brought on a lady who uh, specializes in doing origami, and she's having a number of origami classes throughout the time that we're in Japan. And I have so far attended a couple of her classes. These are some of the things we've made. Let me a little mm-hmm. sweet little flower here. And then we made little envelopes that could hold you know like a gift card something Mm -hmm. like that i thought that's very sweet which is why i had bought the origami paper the day before Mm -hmm. for and i'll have to once all of the classes are are finished i'll have to do a youtube short so you can see all the different origami things that i've made yeah and you've really been getting into this and enjoying it a lot and your your work is just gorgeous and beautiful yeah thank you (laughs) yeah so no it's i'm glad you're having a good time with that well we We, had the uh, bourbon enrichment we had the origami class we had a meeting about africa that's right 
kind of went over some of the excursions and, and things that places we'd be stopping, things we'd be doing, our times that we'd mm-hmm. be in port when we're at our different African destinations. Mm-hmm. So that yeah. covered a lot of information. Yep, yep. They're keeping us informed in the loop as we're getting ready for our Africa adventure. Well, after this full and exciting day of enrichment lectures and origami and everything <laughs> we're doing, um, we had dinner and then they had a headliner show, Rick Ashley. At mm-hmm. Rick Ashley. And he is a, a singer impersonator mm-hmm. and he was quite good. And they also had a make a wish auction. So, right now, this month, they've been. Um, Royal has been promoting uh, donations towards Make-A-Wish, and mm-hmm. so they had auctions of things like you could go and uh, blow the ship's horn, or mm-hmm. you could get a tour of the bridge of the ship, mm-hmm. or um, auction for a thermal spa, or di- mm-hmm. different uh, different things. I think extra internet packages, mm-hmm. things like that. And uh, as of up to this morning, that this recording, I think mm-hmm. they've raised almost eight thousand dollars for Make-A-Wish. Right, and, and in fact. They they left something in our cabin that if you want to do a donation to make a wish, then you can um, uh, take it out of your CPAS account uh, right mm-hmm. from your room charge. There's lots of things you can do. So some of us uh, have some uh, onboard credits that get granted to us, things like that, that you can actually then donate those to make a wish if right. you want. So it's a great, yeah, great, great is. cause make, make and a great way to do it. for uh, children with terminal illnesses mm-hmm. uh, that make a wish helps to grant a wish come true for them. Right, so right. So sweet. thank you, Royal Caribbean, yeah. for putting that together. Yes. And I'm glad we can um, help raise a little bit of money there for that as well. Well, Mike, would we come back to Kogoshima? I think I would like to, yes. We've we've already said Japan is an absolute Fabulous. must return. Fabulous. We have loved, loved, yeah. loved Japan. And I think Kagoshima would be a great place kind of toward mm-hmm. the southern side of Japan to start. Um, not only is the steak unbelievable here, um, <laughs> But there's a, so much here that we need more time to go do. Like we said, I'd love to ride bicycles around the volcano, um, just to kind of get a little bit more into the area around Kagoshima and the things to go do. I think that this is a little bit of a difficult port to just have a few hours with a cruise ship stop. That, I agree. I agree. Mm-hmm. Well, in our next destination tomorrow is Tokyo. It is. We're so excited for Tokyo, Japan. We have two days in Tokyo. We have an overnight there. And you're not going to believe this. I can't believe it happened. But we were in Tokyo and Godzilla attacked. So you've got to see this. Yeah, like, subscribe, turn on those notifications, friends, so you you don't miss that one. (laughs) All right. And we will see you very soon. Have a beautiful day. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.